Hey there, this is Robbie from the Evolution Store in New York City. Uh, Julie asked me to do the video today uh, because we are going to be talking about dinosaurs. Uh, I study paleontology. I studied them uh, at Manhattan College. I am going to be studying uh, very soon at the Institute for Field Research at the La Brea Tar Pits. Um, some of you have been there. It's a great place. You should go check it out. It's in LA. Um, it's no dinosaurs, it's mostly mammoths and saber-toothed tigers and dirals and stuff like that. But um, today we're going to talk about dinosaurs. Um, and two dinosaurs in particular. Uh, we have a number of dinosaur teeth. I'm going to show you that right now. Um, we also have a couple of other prehistoric animals uh, and their teeth. We have some mosasaur teeth. We have some megalodon teeth. Everybody knows and loves megalodon. Um, but we're going to talk about two dinosaurs in particular today. These are Spinosaurus aegypticus teeth on my right. And we got Carcodontosaurus teeth, or uh, Carcodontosaurus tooth, I should say, on the left. Now, you can tell that the, these teeth look very similar. That's because they look, uh, they, they both come from uh, groups of dinosaurs called theropods, right? And theropods, for the most part, were uh, two-legged carnivorous dinosaurs, right? Uh, there were a few exceptions uh, of some of these theropods uh, perhaps eating uh, plant matters, being uh, herbivores, but for the most part, they were the two-legged carnivores that romped around and that we know and love, like Tyrannosaurus rex and Velociraptor and Spinosaurus and Carcanosaurus, right? So, although they are very similar because these are very similar animals, they do have a number of uh, differences and I'm going to compare in a minute, but I'm going to get to that later. So, first let's start with Spinosaurus because you guys might know Spinosaurus. You've probably seen it in a very popular movie called Jurassic Park 3. Um, now that movie was back in 2001, I believe, and a lot has changed uh, in terms of what we know about Spinosaurus. And even before that, we knew a, a, a couple of things about Spinosaurus that we weren't too sure about. So that have, you know that's changed now. So. A lot, this is a, a lot, I can't remember exactly the year, but Spinosaurus aegypticus was found um, by a German paleontologist and was brought to the museum in Berlin. And they didn't find the skull. So as you can see on these models, I have two models here. This, these skulls are very crocodilian, right? They're very crocodile shaped. Um, they didn't find that, they hadn't found that yet. They just found some of the bones. So they knew it had a sail. They knew it was a two-legged theropod, right? But they weren't so sure on what the skull was. They just assumed that it was kind of like a T-Rex-shaped skull, right? Kind of looked like a T-Rex. So if you look at old illustrations of Spinosaurus, sure. I'd be happy to look you'll see kind of a, um, like a, kind of a T-Rex-shaped skull on Spinosaurus. Now, um, Unfortunately, uh, after World War II, or during World War II, I should say, the only known remains of Spinosaurus were bombed and just destroyed, blown into smithereens. Um, so we, we didn't have any, we had some sketches, we knew what people, that were what they thought Spinosaurus looked like, but we didn't have any uh, remains of Spinosaurus anymore. They were all destroyed. Uh, and not until, I believe, the 90s, um, and, and, uh, another expedition was uh, set out to find these Spinosaurs in Egypt. So they went out and they found the skull. And now we know that it has a kind of a spy, uh, crocodilian skull. Now we're learning even more very recently, actually. And I pulled these two models because one of them, although it, at first, this is a very cool model. I love this one. Um, it's very well done. Um, but it's a little bit dated, and that's okay. Science changes. Uh, if anything, I was just talking to a customer the other day about this statue, and I think this one's great, but I would even prefer one of the old uh, Spinosaur statues, the one with the T-Rex skull. I think that would be cool. That's a piece of history, right? Um, so 
what's di what's dated about this one? What what is what what is different? So, if you look on this model, I like this model because it's a little bit more accurate to what we're learning, right? If you see here, this guy's using his front claws to kind of like, you know, keep himself off the ground, right? He's not strictly bipedal. He is still bipedal, but he's using his front arms to kind of uh, help him help him out, help out the, this massive weight. And that's probably uh, more accurate. They probably, I mean, this, that being said, this is just a pose. This guy could hypothetically put his claws on the ground, right? Um, and so why do we think that they did that? So not only is it the positioning, but these were the largest terrestrial carnivores of all time. And it appears, what we're learning with from their skull and other bones like their tail, is that they probably lived a lot of their time in water. And that's probably why they could get so big. For example, the blue whale is the largest animal that ever lived. And that's because it can live in the water and be buoyant, float around. It doesn't have to worry about you know, being on land and having gravity pull down on you as much as, you know, when you're in the water, if you're in a pool, it's not as hard to stand or you know you can just kind of float right things aren't as heavy now we're also noticing that you know there's this crocodile like snout but we also found some more bones in the tail and this tail I actually never really realized down on this model this tail is pretty broad it may have even been even broader probably um, and for swimming you know like a crocodile would have uh, so let me talk about this skull though because as you can see it looks it looks like a crocodile skull right now their teeth as well are very similar to crocodile teeth. These are what we call conical teeth. If you look, um, it's very cone shaped, right? And kind of, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say skinny, obviously. I would say more, you know, uh, but you know, it comes to a point, right? Now, that's perfect for catching fish. Fish are, if you ever snuck up on a fish, a fish can, you know, kind of, kind of tell that you're coming, that's because it's t sensing the water pressure, the changes in water pressure when you get closer to it. But if you're just, a, you know, if it's, you're just moving the, pushing the water with a small point, they're not gonna be able to detect that as quickly, right? So you're gonna be able to snap them and snag them really well, right? Now, here's the thing about Carcodontosaurus teeth. This is why I wanted to bring this up. These teeth are very different because they have, they're more serrated, right? They're better for cutting. That's good for cutting flesh. That's good for some, eating something that necess isn't necessarily in the water, you know, that's on land, right? Um, in fact, carcodontosaur or carcodon, uh, is, we, we also call uh, great white sharks uh, carcodon. I don't know the exact species name, um, but they have very similar t uh, teeth to great white sharks uh, for cutting slicing right now um, a lot of people a lot of customers ask me what you know what is the why is this tooth smaller than this one you know where this is the largest terrestrial carnivore that ever lived was this a baby was this an adult well here's the thing it might have been this might have been a young, younger this might have been older right but it doesn't necessarily matter in fact let me show you on the model see how some of these teeth are quite large and then others are quite small it all could just be a certain area of the jaw where this you know tooth was um, now that's obviously a really big tooth is gonna be you know, more valuable more expensive so and a smaller tooth might be a little bit less and also it might be a little bit beat up as you can see this, the tip has been chipped on this one um, so the price might have gone down a little bit. Now I kind of like my fossils beat up, you know, that's how you know they're old. Um, but obviously a really big tooth that's really kind of not really hard, hasn't, you know, it's been lasted millions of years without taking too much damage is going to be, uh, you know, worth more money. Um, now, Pretty much, that's pretty much all I have to say for the moment about Spinosaur. Uh, you guys should all come on down to the shop and we can have a conversation uh, about anything you want about dinosaurs. I love talking about dinosaurs. It's my favorite thing to do. And uh, I hope you enjoyed my talk on Spinosaur and Carcodontosaur teeth. 
Uh, there's so much more to talk about, but you know, there's only so many hours in the day. Um, so come on down to the Evolution Store in New York City and I'll see you there. And if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask. I'll try to answer as many questions as I can. Thanks guys, bye.